I am Bernard Herschel. Before my retirement, I was the chief of HIV AIDS at the Geneva University Hospitals. You may call me an AIDS dinosaur who has followed the HIV epidemic from the very first cases in the early 1980s through the triumph of antiretroviral therapies, a triumph unequaled in the annals of medicine. This triumph has its flip side. Younger colleagues are no longer familiar with the opportunistic diseases and the myriad manifestations, hence the idea of these videos. After a short introduction, they will show a series of images illustrating one or several exemplary cases from my files. Visceral KS involves mostly the lung and the GI tract. A rare example of probable AIDS before the disease was officially recognized in May of 1981. The patient was from Eastern Congo and he presented in December 1980 with cryptococcal meningitis. What we see here is pulmonary KS with typical centrally located nodular confluent opacities. The disease was only diagnosed at autopsy. Immunosuppressed patients often have several opportunistic diseases simultaneously. Here is an example. A patient with extensive cutaneous KS presented with pneumocystis pneumonia on August 24, 1984. After treatment of PCP, the chest X-ray was much improved 12 days later on September 5th. Note, however, the persistent massive hyalur lymphadenopathy. The enlarged lymph nodes were due to pulmonary Kaposi sarcoma, which progressed during the next six weeks. We have seen that oral lesions are very frequent in KS. The rest of the GI tract may also be involved. In general, the involvement is asymptomatic. This patient with esophageal lesions, however, complained of dysphagia. An example of diffuse gastric involvement where diagnosis was established by biopsy. Two KS nodules in the jejunum at autopsy. These lesions were asymptomatic. A 25-year-old African woman with pulmonary infiltrates, a pelvic mass, and a pararectal fistula. At bronchoscopy, a bluish tumor in the lower pharynx was seen, presumably KS. A biopsy of the pelvic mass showed Kaposi's sarcoma. Let's move on to treatment. We have to consider highly active antiretroviral therapy, irradiation and other local treatments, and systemic chemotherapy. Art prevents the development of KS. This paper from the Swiss HIV cohort study measured the occurrence of opportunistic disease in immunosuppressed HIV positive patients, comparing the period before Heart, 1992 to 1994, with the period after introducing Heart, 1997 and 1998. The x-axis shows the relative risk on a logarithmic scale. The white dots indicate the relative risk in the heart period divided by the risk before heart. For opportunistic infections, the relative risk was 0.18. This is an 82% reduction. For Kaposi sarcoma, the reduction in risk was even greater, about 92%. But heart can also cure KS. In patients who already have Kaposi sarcoma at the start of heart, it may cause lesions to regress and disappear. Here is an example taken from the literature. 
In this example, a biopsy proven KS lesion of the chest wall regressed on heart. However, while remission is the rule, some KS tumors do not respond to heart for reasons which are not entirely clear. KS is highly radiosensitive. Isolated troublesome tumors can, for instance, be treated with 8 gray of 6 to 9 mega electron volt electron beams in a single fraction. Here's an example before and after such irradiation. As a rule, however, KS is disseminated and local treatment does not suffice. The most frequently used IV regimen is liposomal doxorubicin at a dose of 50 mg per square meter of body surface given every four weeks. Effect of one dose of liposomal doxorubicin in a case of biopsy proven pulmonary KS. Regression of oral lesions and of splenomegaly after eight doses of 40 mg per square meter of intravenous liposomal doxorubicin. This patient had received a large cumulative dose of liposomal doxorubicin and was therefore switched to docetaxel, taxotir. The tumor responded as seen here, but the patient suffered severe mucositis with leukopenia and fever. Last but not least, a chapter on histology and the human herpes virus 8, HHV8, also called Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus, KSHV. Picture 1, a low power view of a nodule. Note the hemorrhagic appearance. Picture 2, the spindle cells arranged in a school of fish pattern. 3. The blood-filled pseudovascular spaces. And 4. The globular bodies which correspond to degraded hemoglobin. Right from the start of the AIDS epidemic, many investigators were convinced that KS, a so-called neoplasm, must be transmitted by sex or saliva. If you look at categories of HIV infection, it is frequent in homosexual males where it correlates strongly with number of partners. It is rare in IV drug users. It is rare in heterosexual males. In heterosexual females, which were HIV infected by sexual contact with a bisexual male, rare cases were observed. But in heterosexual females, sexually infected by IV drug users, it never occurred. This suggested very strongly a transmission by sex or saliva. And the hunt was on for the probable viral cause. The race was won by Yuan Chang and Patrick Moore, who found pieces of DNA in KS which were not present in normal tissue of the same individuals. These pieces of DNA identified a new virus of the herpes family called herpes virus 8, HHV8, or Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus, KSHV. HHV8 is invariably present in all Kaposi sarcomas. It is a gamma herpes virus related to a oncogenic virus in a monkey called Cymeris curious herpes virus Cymeri, and also related to Epstein-Barr virus, another oncogenic human virus. It contains multiple genes which may be implicated in pathogenesis by upregulating, for instance, BCL2, IL-6, cyclin D, IL-8R receptor, CR2, etc. 
A simple table to relate viruses to neoplasia in the context of HIV infection. Kaposi's sarcoma is caused by HHV8, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and cerebral lymphoma by EBV. Both Epstein-Barr virus and HHV8 are implicated in abdominal lymphomas and body cavity lymphomas. KS lesions stain very strongly with several antibodies directed against proteins of HHV8. Thank you for watching and thanks in advance for your feedback. This video is part of a series on opportunistic diseases in HIV AIDS. If you are interested, please subscribe or click on the latest upload top left.